itself for five minutes. And Mr. Fenton, I would like to start with you. I really want to talk about the Federal Housing Finance Agency, which in September of 2008, as you know, seized Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, what is the financial liability? Do you know off the top of your head the liability taxpayers have for that? It's something like five trillion dollars in mortgage liabilities. Is that about your? Two agencies is about. Microphone, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, between the two agencies, they uh, either directly own or insure about five trillion dollars worth in uh, mortgages. I just want people to settle so, in on that. Uh, the, the taxpayers are on the hook for this amount of money and. It's true, right, that the Federal Housing Finance Agency is subject to a Freedom of Information Act request, correct? Generally speaking, yes. In May of 2009, General, uh, Judicial Watch put in a FOIA request for documents related to political contributions made by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. How did the uh, FHFA respond to that, uh, that FOIA request? Uh, they acknowledged the records were in their custody and control, but they were not agency records subject to disclosure under FOIA. And the FHA, FHFA denied the FOIA request, saying the agency, quote, did not control them. Um, so are Fannie and Freddie wholly operated by the federal government now? Who's actually running that agency, those, those entities? It is, uh, they've acknowledged repeatedly that they do run the, uh, the two entities, uh, Fannie and Freddie, the F Federal Housing Finance Administration. They're, they're under a conservatorship. Uh, Sorry. They're under a conservatorship. Uh, were taken in, over in, in 2008 uh, under the powers the uh, government has under the Housing and Economic Recovery Act, the HERA Act of 2008. Thank you. I understand. I understand. The statute granting the FHFA uh, conservatorship over Fannie and Freddie states that the FHFA has, quote, all rights, titles, powers, and privileges of Fannie and Freddie and of any stockholder, officer, or director, end quote. Is that, Mr. Fitton, is that your understanding of it as well? Yes, and it's been acknowledged by the agency itself. I believe that the statute also says that FHFA has, quote, title to the books, records, and assets of any other legal custodian of, end quote, Fannie and Freddie. Is that your understanding, Mr. Fitton? Yes. Um, is it true that under FOIA, an agency record is subject to disclosure unless a specific exemption applies, Mr. Finn? Uh, yes, generally speaking, yes. So did the FHFA suggest to Judicial Watch Fannie and Freddie records were somehow exempt from FOIA? They did not subject, they did not say they were subject to FOIA but exempt from disclosure. They said they were not subject to FOIA at all. So how does one conclude that Fannie and Freddie are not subject to FOIA. Well, that's for the, uh, you know, uh, judges figured that out for us, and they said that an agency, uh, even though they had the records, unless they, quote, used them, uh, they weren't subject to FOIA, which just struck me as wrong and still strikes me as wrong, but that's the court decision, and so it's going to be up to Congress to, uh, to deal fix with that. Yeah. So that's why I introduced this bill. Um, and to members on both sides, what are we afraid of in terms of exposing the liabilities that Fannie and Freddie are creating for us? And there are exorbitant sums of money going out the door, again, that the American taxpayers are liable for. I've got to shift uh, gears here to Mr. Hollister just, just a little bit. I want to talk about the data collection. If you can kind of explain in layman's terms how the Dunn's number works, um, because Things are given a code, and Dun and Bradstreet, a contractor, um, that system is owned by Dun and Bradstreet. Could you kind of explain that to us and how that works and what it costs the taxpayers to do? Yes, sir. In the 1990s, the General Services Administration contracted with Dun and Bradstreet to track federal contractors government wide. Dun and Bradstreet operates the system that does this. Now, that's pretty normal as far as federal practice goes. What's unique is that the contract doesn't just give Dun and Bradstreet the ownership of the system that's used to track the contractors. It also gives Dun and Bradstreet an interest in the identification code itself. This means that nobody can use the information that's encoded using that number. 
unless they purchase a license from Dun & Bradstreet. Now, the federal government has a government-wide license, applies to most agencies. It doesn't apply to special purpose entities like the Recovery Board, which is why Recovery Act spending had to go dark because they didn't have a license. But it doesn't apply to citizens. Citizens, researchers, journalists, they can't download and analyze information about federal spending unless they purchase a license from Dun & Bradstreet. That means they pay for the information twice. So the American taxpayers, they, they pay for the government, right? And the government has a contract, but you're saying that the taxpayers who already paid once have to go back and get another license. That's right, sir. They have to pay again because there is a the Dun & Bradstreet, which is itself a private sector contractor, has an ownership interest in the information about contractors. And they get to see it first, then, I would assume. They do get to see it first, and they use it for their other business. For example, in order to maintain uh, all of this information and this federal transparency, you might need a few data fields. You need to know the name of the company. You need to know the address. You might need to know what kind of business they're operating. Dun & Bradstreet uses its monopoly. It requires every contractor to register with that company. And they don't just collect that, those few pieces of information. They collect 1,500 additional pieces of information, and then they sell that. They use their monopoly on this identification code, not just to make money off the taxpayers who want to download the information, but also to coerce the, uh, those who must register with them to provide additional information that they then sell as a vendor. It's something we need to spend some more time on because um, it is quite a monopoly and given to them by the American people, paid for by the American people, and then they want to charge it again. And we do have a bill, a good bill here, uh, I think, uh, in order to, to tackle that. My time is far expired. We'll now recognize the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Kelly, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 